Okay, I'm sick and tired of my battery dying. Let's fix it today. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And if you have seen my video, how to find 12 volt power on your car, I'll post a leak in the corner over here. Then you know that I have a circuit that is always energized and it's draining. I found a specific spot in my fuse block where I could tap in using fuse taps. They finally came in. I will put a link down to the uh, these down below. Check them out. This should probably cover you for most modern GM cars, Chevy, GMC, Cadillac, all that stuff. These things are great. As I said, they have two spots for fuses. One of them retains the original fuse, so your original circuit you're tapping off of is safe. And then it has an additional fuse to make sure that your new circuit is safe. So, great, great item. They're cheap. As I said, check below. And if you are running something besides a GM, double check to see what kind of fuse you are. These are, eh, I don't even know. I think they're called micro. There's so many different fuses nowadays. The other big thing, and I will put a link down to this below, is use the proper set of crimpers. These things are butt splices. If you do not use a true set of butt splice crimpers, you will have issues. I cannot stress that enough. I have been doing this for almost 20 years and I've seen so many circus fails because people are not using the right set of crimpers. So I will put a link down to a cheap set of crimpers. If you're doing any electrical work on your car, buy them, please. Save yourself the trouble. But this is going to be a pretty quick fix. We already identified a good fuse to tap off of, one that is on the key. That way I'm not running this thing. It's already going to cost me about, you know, who knows, 100, 200 bucks to replace the battery, but this will keep me from having to replace another battery down the road. Honestly, for no more than I drive this truck, I should have done this from the get go. I have no excuses. But stick around. We'll get up underneath there. We're going to fix this problem today. Let's move this camera over so you can see what I'm talking about. Sorry. Okay. Now I'm just coming through here, tossing a couple zip ties on, keep the wire up out of the way, keep everything looking good and clean. I like to hook it to wire, uh, but if you got something like a brake line, as long as you get this thing tight, it shouldn't be an issue. As long as we're keeping it out of the way of the hot stuff and when we're done make sure and trim off the ends keep everything nice and clean okay looks like my wire is a little bit short but we're going to be all right because i've got xx wire we're going to go to the back here and cut off the original wire and then we'll bring it forward so <laughs> oh god sure if you're going to be able to see it but up uh, up above here is the original wire coming back to where it's tapped off we're going to see if we just can't go ahead and disengage this fuse tap there we go and we will clip this wire it was tied into the uh, brake lights that's why it was on all the time which was not good it was running my battery down and we're going to be a little bit short, so we're going to have to add another section on. Unfortunately, it's not what I necessarily want to do right now, but it's what I've got to do to make it work. So I will grab another section of wire and a couple more butt splices, and we'll tie it together in the meantime. So I got some white. We'll make it work. That's what we do around here. That is what being a shade tree mechanic is all about getting by with what you got at least we're using the correct crimping tools to make sure that all of our connections are good okay now that those are crimp let's double check give it a good pull i mean pull on that thing make sure that you're not going to have that thing pop loose and we need to route this wire i gotta get it up over the four link here make sure it's not bumping into anything so you know i'm gonna have to relocate my creeper because I did not jack the truck up high enough to get underneath the axle. So here we have it. We want to run this stuff up over everything if possible. 
Man, I should jack the other side of the truck up. It's a tight fit. We'll be fine though. We'll make it work. Probably. Oh man. This is where Murtaugh would say, I'm getting too old for this stuff. Here's our wires. We are going to meet kind of in the middle here. In the middle somewhere where we can zip tie everything down if I can only find my strippers. There they are. Okay, so I think I found a pretty good circuit here. I got a little 10 amp circuit here for a pump. I'm not sure exactly what it goes for, but it shouldn't be powered on all the time. The nice thing about these few uh, taps are is that, you know, you still have your original protection in place. And so it's not a big ordeal. I just wouldn't tie them into anything that has to do with like the ECM or the TCM system because there's a good chance you might mess something up. You know, better safe than sorry. Find a system that's not necessarily critical. Everything is isolated, as I said. So it shouldn't be a big ordeal, but... Whenever it comes to electronics, anything that actually has any kind of computational power like the ECM, it's probably a better idea to not tie a fuse into that. So this is uh, not exactly sure what pump it is, but we should be all right. Let's go see if it's, uh, it's going to work. Okay, now that we got the circuit hooked up, we'll be watching right there to see if this light turns on. That means it's on whenever, hopefully, we turn the key to on. This device is used to change the output of my fuel sender on my fuel cell to match what the factory GM input is on there. So let me go turn the key to the on position. Let's see if it kicks on. That's what we're looking for. Now we should not be killing the battery anymore, hopefully. Okay, that's all there is to tapping into an existing circuit to supply power. As I said, I've been killing this battery for years now. I mean, it's probably been going on almost two years. I have to keep this thing hooked up to the trickle charger, and I still start it every uh, two weeks probably. But it just, that thing has been on consistently since I installed it. Feels good to finally get it taken care of. And it's not that complicated. As I said, the nice thing about using those fuse taps is that your original circuit stays intact. It is still protected by the original fuse rating. You are not adding any amperage to that circuit. You are basically splitting that circuit off because the high side of that that's coming where you're getting the voltage off of the block, that thing is, is independent of what the load is downstream of that. So you're, you are protected both on the original circuit by the original fuse and the new circuit by the new fuse. So, hey, I'll put some links down in the blog or the description below, as I said, to the taps that I'm using on these late model Chevys. Uh, and, you know, as always, if you have any suggestions or if you have any questions, hit up the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. There's going to be more great content coming out here soon. And uh, throw a thumbs up my way if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, you know, throw a thumbs down my way, but explain to me what you did not like about the video. That way I can get better and I can provide better content for you guys. So let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.